All right, hi everybody. Welcome to Take a Break with Jake and Kelsey. And today we're introducing everybody to our favorite sloth here at the zoo. Her name is Fern. Hey, Fern. Look over here. Hi, Fern. Hi, girl. So, um, just like Kelsey has up next to her beautiful face, Fern is a Lynn's two toed sloth. She's native to Central and South America. She's about four years old now. And she mostly eats vegetables. So in the wild, sloths eat tons and tons of leaves, bark off of trees, twigs, anything they can find really that's like herbivorous. Um, and then they'll also eat some bugs, some lizards, some other little tiny creatures that, especially ones that like get stuck in all the leaf litter. Oh, there's a good close up of her. Crazy little I think eyes. That was our vocab verb of the day, Jake. Herbivorous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, sloths are very strange creatures. Obviously, they hang upside down. That's kind of like how most of us know sloths. Here's a good like view of sloth burn. Um, let's see, Kelsey. Some of the weird things about sloths. First, they have a chambered stomach, so they have multiple parts to their stomach, okay. and that's where they actually ferment the food that they eat. So the so, reason why sloths... <clears throat> go ahead. Um, is that similar to, like, a goat's stomach, or is it different? Exactly. Exactly. Very similar okay. to a goat or a cow's stomach. Um, and so they use those different chambers to break down the foods that they eat. There you go. Cute. Here, I'll give you some ASMR. You can even hear her swallowing, very gross. Um, okay, so the chambered stomach helps break down all the food and that's like one of the reasons why they are uh, slow movers out in the wild and in human care because if they are eating all of these leaves all day long, A, they're not getting a lot of like energy out of those leaves and then B, it takes a long time for their body to break down all that food and extract what they need from it. So um, that's one kind of cool thing. And so they have different bacteria all throughout their body that help break down that food. They have especially potent bacteria in their mouths, and that's one of the reasons why you never want to get a bite from a sloth, because their mouths are really, okay, really good. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Um, let's see. What else is strange about them? Obviously, hanging upside down is kind of crazy, right? Um, but that's yep. how they spend their entire lives. And when they're upside down, their eyes are sending, you know, images, obviously, to the brain, and then the brain is kind of interpreting what's going on around them the brain actually flips the image so that they can see right side up when they're upside down, if that makes sense. So it's, they are seeing okay. like perfectly normally when they're hanging like this, but if Fern were to come down to the ground and then have her head like facing like yours or mine, Kelsey, mm -hmm. she would see everything upside down. Does that make sense? Kind of, not really. So if you hung upside down or hung like Fern off of uh -huh. this platform, and you looked at me just like Fern is looking over here right now, that would be upside <laughs> down for you. That would be weird. Yes. For Fern, she's seeing me as I actually am. Like she's seeing me right side up in her head. That's crazy. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. Um, some other cool things about sloths, they have all of this coarse fur covering their body. And they actually are one of the few mammals that has fur that actually comes out from their stomach and goes down and around the sides of her body. Here's a good look at that. So it comes from here and it goes down towards the back as opposed to from the back towards the uh, belly. And that's because they're hanging upside down. And in the rainforest, obviously, it's raining a lot. And so they need to be able to repel that water. So sloth fur is very, very coarse. It's uh, pretty wiry. Here's a little like up close look at it. And that helps. Hi, we were showing them your fur. And that helps them repel all that water off of them. It also helps because in the wild, sloths move so slowly that algae can actually grow on their fur. Okay. And that actually is a really great way for them to protect themselves. So because they're moving slowly and because they're covered in algae, they kind of look like giant green, you know, blobs and so they're able to hide <laughs> out in the wild that's called camouflage amazing i saw um a question come through and i 
I can't remember the name, but um, one of our kid viewers was wondering um, if Fern likes to eat cucumbers. You know, she doesn't really love cucumbers. A little bit ago, I gave her some squash. She likes yellow okay. squash. I have some of her other foods here. We have green pepper, apple, sweet potato. She's not really fond of unless it's cooked. These are some biscuits that have some more protein in them. Today's a hard boiled egg day, which is her favorite day. And then she gets lots of leafy greens. So I'm gonna try to give her another piece of squash because she's looking over here like, why are you talking about my food and not putting it in my Where's mouth? Where's my snacks? Do not want the squash. Are you holding out for something better? No, she's like, I'll accept this offering. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Eden, age five, asks, does Fern have a baby? Fern does not have a baby. No, she's never been with a male. Um, Leslie, I think I saw that you asked, does everyone have sound? Um, try closing out and coming back in. That might fix your problem. Or hit the volume button up, like, once. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if I missed any other questions. Um, is there a reason why sloths move so slowly? Yeah, so they move slowly, A, so that, B, A, because they're eating all of this vegetation that's not giving them a lot of energy, and then B, because if you're moving slowly in the rainforest, it's a lot easier to hide from predators. So especially if they're covered in algae, <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, they're going to blend in really well. And then if they're crashing through the rainforest really quickly, it draws attention to you by noise and by sight. And so moving slowly is a really great adaptation to hide from predators. Jake, I saw a question a little bit ago from, I think, Chelsea. Um, she was wondering, um, Fern's nose looks really wet. Why are they like that? So just like dogs' noses are wet, and that helps draw uh, more sense in, sloths rely really heavily on their sense of smell to figure out what's going on around them. So it helps her to have a, a nice wet nose. Yum. We love that for her. Um, I would personally not like to have a wet nose. I don't All know right. about you, Jake. No, thank you. Um, Jake, I saw a really interesting question. What do you think is the biggest misconception about sloths? I think it's really that sloths are lazy. Generally speaking, they're not really lazy. If you can imagine, you know, she's getting food every day by eating individual leaves off of trees. And it takes a lot of leaves to make a girl feel full. Um, so they're not really lazy at all. They just, A, move slowly to defend themselves from predators, mm -hmm. and B, don't have a ton of energy to move around. If I was only eating leaves day in and day out, I would be, one, very unhappy, and two, very slow. True. So true. Um, Anna Grace is wondering, are there any different main differences between a two-toed sloth and a three-toed sloth, besides, of course, the number of toes? Yeah, so it's, it's mostly the number of toes and then some of its, like, distribution, like where they can be found in the wild. Lynn's two-toed sloths are fairly widespread throughout Central and Northern South America, and some of the three-toed sloths are only found in really specific regions. Um, obviously, the two toes and the three toes are kind of a good indicator. So this is kind of interesting. Two-toed sloths all have three toes on their back feet, um, but this is how you tell them apart, is their front feet only have the two toes. Hi. You know, I don't think I knew that, Jake. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. I've and, done, what, three lives with you and Fern now, and I didn't know that? I feel like I've said it, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I'm, Kelsey, I saw someone was asking how big uh, her claws are and I would say the longest ones are about two and a half inches long okay and that's another like cool thing about sloths is uh people think you know like oh they're slow moving they just kind of hang around and that's absolutely true they actually utilize their body mass to hold on so these claws and their feet are curved to hold on so they don't have to like actively be climbing around like that but sloths have about 25% of their mass being muscles, and that's about half as much as most other mammal species. So most mammals have about 50% muscles. Okay. Um, sloths have far less. And because of that, they have to rely on their body to hold on up high in the trees, but they can do some really cool things where they do have muscles 
is where it counts for climbing creatures. So you may have noticed a little bit earlier, she um, kind of bends down off the perch. Nice, right on cue. On cue. Thank you. Um, so she can actually do that, like, nice, you know, hang with relative ease. Um, and then she can also, like, climb really well, like, moving up higher in the trees pretty rapidly if she needs to. She has to have, like, pretty good, like, core muscles to do that movement we just saw. Exactly. The other interesting thing about not having a ton of muscles is she actually can't shiver to warm herself up. Now, typically, that's not really an issue because in the rainforest, if everything's going, you know, according to how rainforest should be, it should be relatively warm there. But sloths have a really, really weird body temperature range. It's something like 74 degrees all the way to 92 degrees Fahrenheit is like within wow. the normal range for a sloth. And humans, you know, we have like a, what, four degree range that's mm -hmm. like, oh, that's normal. No, the sloth is crazy. They have a very large range of normal body temperatures. Um, but if they get too cold, they actually can't keep fermenting their food and keeping their food processing. And that can lead to um, death in the wild. So here in human care, we're really cautious with both of our sloths here at the zoo. We have Fern, who's an ambassador animal. And for those of you who haven't heard before, ambassador animals are all of our animals that live behind the scenes, but come out for different kinds of programming, both on grounds and off site um, when we're not under a pandemic. Um, and then <laughs> Emmett, our male sloth, actually lives in the aviary here at the zoo. So he's here every day for visitors to see. But like sometimes like over this past winter, y'all uh, members of people who visit frequently have probably noticed like Emmett was gone for a little bit we were dealing with some HVAC and heating issues in the aviary and it was too cold to safely keep Emmett in there. We didn't know how cold it would plunge to overnight. So we had to move him out of there to make sure that he maintained that optimal body temperature so that he could continue processing food and stay alive. Um, Jake, I'm just gonna try and catch us up on a few questions. Great. Um, Ollie H4 wants to know, um, how can you feed the sloth with your hands if it's dangerous to be bitten? Um, well, let me show you again how I feed her. I'm not putting my hands in her mouth. Mm -hmm. I do this. This is the technique to feed a sloth. <sighs> Safe. You see that? Yep. Um, Fern's a very nice sloth, so it's very unlikely that she would bite. Um, but if you get on her bad side or bother her or aren't reading her body language properly, it's entirely possible that she could bite you. Um, Leighton wants to know, what are their predators in the wild? So a ton of things can prey upon sloths if they find them. All the different species of cats that live in Central and South America, so everything from an ocelot all the way up to a jaguar could hunt a sloth. Harpy eagles and other kinds of birds of prey in the wild can eat sloths. And this is like very morbid for sloths, but it's really kind of interesting. The harpy eagle just takes its giant talons and punches sloths out of trees to dispatch them. It's brutal, <laughs> but a really good way of hunting. I was um, a little shocked when you just said that. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. saw my face. Yeah, it's pretty cool the way that different animals have adapted to hunt. Um, I don't know if you remember this, Jake, but at the end of our last Facebook Live, um, Fern actually landed a punch on me. Yes, yes. <laughs> so sloths can actually protect themselves by swiping. She wasn't really doing it that day. No. But they can swipe and hiss and even bite if they're threatened. She thought I had a snack, to be yeah, fair. She likes Kelsey. Um, okay. Um, Jake, how much does Fern weigh? Fern is, I want to say about nine kilograms, so about 20 pounds. Okay, I, I don't know why, but I didn't expect her to be that heavy. Yeah, she's like a big creature. Yeah. Um, okay, several questions, Jake, about like um, novel movements, I guess, of sloths. Okay. Do they swim? Do they go on the ground? Like, talk me through that. Yeah, so sloths can swim, and that's one of the ways that they'll protect themselves out in the wild. If they're bothered by a predator, if they're over a body of water, they can just hop down into the water and swim away. Really great way to protect themselves. Um, they can't really walk on the ground because their body is designed to be hanging. So you don't want the sweet potato. Wow. Um, so what they do, if they do have to move from like a tree to another tree, but they have to go down to the ground to do it, is they 
get down on the ground and it's like something out of a horror film. They fling their front legs forward and drag themselves along. And it's very terrifying. And it's not something that I would uh, recommend you Googling or YouTubing because it's very scary to see. I, you know, I really just want to see you do that. Like, to be um, honest. I'll, tr I'll try to do it later. Can you send me like a quick video of yourself doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. I promise not to post it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. Jackson wants to know, was For Fern born at the zoo or did she come somewhere else? Um, she came from a zoo down in Florida. She came once she was weaned from her mother and was like off on her own. And we've had her since then. Um, let's see. Um, Bennett, age six, wants to know how sloths drink. Just like you and I, Bennett, she uses her mouth to slurp in water, but she doesn't like to use cups. She just slurps directly from a bowl. How does that work upside down? Um, just like careful. Usually what she <laughs> tends to do is she like sucks in water and then kind of gets a little more right side up and then swallows it. But she also will just like lick dew off of branches or leaves. They're not big mm -hmm. like guzzlers of water like you or I might be like after a run or after a walk. Um, sloths tend to get most of their liquid from the food they eat. I see several questions about their claws, Jake. Um, and you guys don't file those down for her, right? Not really. This is kind of what they look like. If they were to overgrow, we could trim a little bit. But honestly, like, I'm getting a really good look at them right now. Her her nails look just fine. I'm not. And do they just like wear down naturally? On exactly. Them? Okay. Yep. Cool. Um, how many different kinds of sloths are there, Jake? Six total species of sloths, and there are four species that have three toes on all four feet, and then two species that have two toes on the front feet and three on the back, and that's why they're called two-toed and three-toed sloths. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let's see, Lucas, age 10, um, wants to know, do you sloths usually stay in one tree or do they move around a large territory over time? They move around a pretty large area because they have to eat leaves from all these different trees and plants. So they're constantly moving from tree to tree, especially at night, they're fairly nocturnal. And so they'll move around to get different trees to eat from. Um, has there been like, I mean, I'm sure there has been, like, a study on, like, how far a sloth moves in a day. Um, I really haven't seen one, but I can tell you, like, Emmett, who lives in the aviary, he actually will do laps around yeah. the aviary every once in a while. So it's a pretty far distance that sloths can travel in one day. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people ask, like, how fast can a sloth move? And I've never seen any research, like, clocking how quickly yeah. a sloth can crawl along on a branch. But they can move really quickly if they want to. Yeah. I mean, just from, like, my personal experience of watching Emmett, I mean, he can truck it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, how long have we had um, Fern, Jake? We've had Fern for about four years now. Three mm -hmm. and a half years, I guess. She's, yes. She's a little over four, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's hard to keep everybody's birthday sorted. It is really hard. Say that. But that feels right. Around 2016. I believe so. Maybe. Maybe the end of 2016. I think um, so. Let's see. I'm trying to scroll through again. A couple questions about how sloths use the bathroom, Jake. So sloths can hold up to a gallon of urine in their bladder. And so they typically come to the ground to go to the bathroom because you can imagine if they're 30 feet up in a tree, if they go to the bathroom up there, it's going to make a lot of noise going all the way down. So to protect themselves from predators, what sloths do instead of going to the bathroom up high is they crawl all the way down, go to the bathroom about once a week, and then crawl all the way back up. In human care, since they don't have to worry about predators, oftentimes sloths will go to the bathroom more frequently, um, but typically that's how they do it out in the wild. That makes sense. Um, let's see, the um, <laughs> funny comment, um, Emmett must be a master at camouflage because we have never been able to see him. He's very good at hide and seek. Yes, yes. Um, let's see. How long does a sloth live, Jake? In human care? Are you going to try to climb there? She's trying to go to this giant pole. I don't know if that'll work for you, Fern. 
Um, sloths can live upwards of 40 years in human care, much less in the wild. How well? Jake, where does a fern sleep? She actually has a milk crate that she likes to crawl into. Um, and she likes to feel really enclosed and secure. And that's pretty common for sloths. And so that's where she likes to sleep. Hello. Um, let's see. Evelyn, age four, wants to know, how many teeth does Fern have? Oh, gosh. People are always wanting to know the number of teeth. Can you open your mouth for me? You really got to start counting. I know, us. girl. So she, I know for a fact that she has two canines on the top and bottom mandible. So she has four big teeth. And then really most of uh, the animals in the sloth family, so things like anteaters and armadillos and other sloths, they typically more have a hard palate than they do actual teeth. So she has four fangs and then the rest of her is mostly just a hard palate. Let's see, I'm scrolling through again. Um... Can we talk about what sounds sloths make for a bit? Typically not a lot of sound from these kids. However, when offspring are young and they want food or they want their parents, um, they may make some noise like squeaking and screaming. And then typically when females are ready f to find a mate in the wild, and sometimes in human care, they scream really loudly to attract mates. And it's like a high pitched piercing scream. But that's generally the extent of the noise that they make. Mm, good question from Levi. Um, do they live in family groups or as individuals? They are mostly solitary. So that's why our two sloths here at the zoo live without other sloths. Mm -hmm. They typically come together for breeding season and then they say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um, do, oh, Simone, age nine, wants to know, do you hold her a lot? Um, no. Fern's very gross. She's covered in urine most of the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really interested in holding her. There's some question, cute pictures though, of her hanging on you when she was oh, younger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When she was younger, she would climb onto us a lot more readily. And she would do mm -hmm. it these days, too. Even just yesterday, I was cleaning her house. And she was trying to climb over to me because she has a strong history of like getting lots of yummy treats mm -hmm. when she's hanging out with us. But listen, her claws are like fairly sharp yep. when they're digging into your flesh um, when she hangs on to your back. And she's heavy and she's covered in urine. So I don't hold her, no. I can't imagine why. Right. Um, Lennon, age 10, um, wants to know, how are baby sloths um, born and cared for in the wild? This is a good question, Lennon. Yeah, so sloths are kind of neat. They have kind of one opening that they use to like go to the bathroom and breed and have their babies and everything. That's right there. Um, and so the baby comes out of that and then crawls onto mom's stomach and spends most of its time right there for a while. And then the mom will feed the baby with milk, but then the baby will also start grabbing all kinds of leaves and vegetation as mom is doing that as well. And then the baby starts eating alongside mom. Yeah. Um, but they will stay like hanging out on mom for quite a while, right? For, yeah, up to two years, but typically it's like six to eight months. I know Emmett for sure when his, um, when he was a baby, he was mm -hmm. like hanging onto his mother when he was like the size of his mother. Literally. And you would see her like, pushing her him away and being mm -hmm. like you need to go you need to be on your own well that can't be comfy for like a 20 pound thing to like no. be carrying around another 20 pound thing no not in the slightest uh My let's see Moving around. simone age nine wants to know can she stand up at all no she can't so i covered it a little bit earlier um but slots really don't have the musculature to support themselves standing upright and they certainly can't uh stand on the ground so they really just hang good question uh let's see isabella um age 18 wants to know <laughs> do they like people and to be petted um fern does not like being touched by people she doesn't know i'm the same way for the record um she really doesn't mind if like those of us who work with her every day touch her on her back like i can pet her back here you can see she's like hello do you have food is food involved? And if it's not involved, she's like, please leave me alone. Thank you. 
and that's pretty normal. Yeah. Um, I saw Allie ask, um, could we ever do one-on-one -on -one visits with Fern? And that's kind of a no. Um, but we do have backstage pass tours with Fern on Fridays, I believe, once we reopen. Um, and it's like you and a, like a very small group. So you can meet Fern. It's just not one-on-one. -on -one, but I think it's more fun with a few friends, personally. You right. Uh, share the love, you know, Jake? Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to catch up on questions, but there's so many. Uh, Carson wants to know how strong are sloths? And I think we touched on this a little, Jake, but like, how strong are they in comparison to maybe another animal? You know, they have half as many muscles or half the muscle mass that other mammals have, um, but they're still really strong. The muscles they do have do some solid work. So they're quite strong. This is it's really mm -hmm. gross while you're looking at questions, um, Carthy. Fern scent marked on her perch, which is super nasty. Another reason I don't like holding her. The, the reasons just keep adding up. Yeah, girl. Um, do you ever feed fern hibiscus? Yeah, so we actually have a Rose of Sharon, which is a hibiscus like cousin um, in our building or next to our building. And so oftentimes in the summer, I'll go grab different hibiscus uh, flowers and feed them to her. So she really loves those. We've actually found that we can freeze them for over the winter as well. And so she always has a steady supply of flowers. We have to limit her intake because she gets stopped up if she eats too many. Oh, poor baby. I know. Uh, let's see. Will Fern ever be bred? Ashley is asking that. So we do participate with the species survival plan for the Lynn's two-toed sloth. At the moment, we don't have a breeding recommendation for Fern, um, but maybe in the future, yeah. Hi. Um, I just scrolled to the bottom to try and like catch up a little. Um, and I saw a question from my dear friend, Kate. Um, how does the pattern, pattern on their fur help camouflage them in the wild? Um, so definitely different colors help break up the body and make it harder to see like where the head is or where the tail is or whatever. Um, and then the wavy fur also helps catch some algae and other plants in the rainforest and helps her grow all of those different things. Um, Otherwise, they're relying on moving slowly and staying hidden. Here you go, girl. She doesn't want the sweet potato. <laughs> she's doing what I call her potty dance, where she's like getting antsy on the perch because she has to go to the bathroom. So if we have maybe one more question, we can ask that. And then I'm going to sign off so I can let this girl go to the restroom. Yeah, I think I've got two more, Jake. Okay. Um, a really good question from Ashlyn. What do you call a baby sloth? Um, I just call them a baby. I'm not sure that they have an actual, like, term. I just call them babies. Okay. Um, let's see. And, oh, my gosh, I lost my other question. So I'm just going to do whatever the last one was. Is their nose squishy? Age 11. Potato. It's fairly squishy. Uh, it's about as squishy as our nose is, actually. Amazing. There's some give there. Yeah, so if you, like, wet your finger... And then you touch your nose. That's basically how Fern's nose feels. <laughs> Wet and twitchy. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jake, for hanging out with us. And you too, Fern. You did a great job hanging out. So. Yeah, she's a pro. Um, we will let her go to the bathroom. And Jake, have a great rest of your afternoon. If you guys have questions, drop them in the comments on our feed. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thanks, Kelsey. Bye, everyone.